So we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 5.35. Uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Um, approve the minutes of Monday, February 6th. Well moving. I apologize. Those were in your packets. <laughs> I yeah, I looked at a lot of my gallery were sent around a few well, weeks so. ago. I didn't have any questions. Yeah. So. Okay, great. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Great. Uh, public comment? I don't believe we have any public on. All right. Moving on to board comment. Okay, there being no board comment, we'll move right along to the celebration of learning. Sorry, we've started. No, we go for it. Sorry. Um, so before February vacation, we had John Gamore come and do an artist in residency with all our students, um, preschool through sixth grade. And that process is, it starts like on a Monday and he comes in and they just write a song together, just the words. Uh, or the lyrics. Then the next day they put it to music. They get to pick with him. He gives them a bunch of examples. Was there a specific theme that they were? No, it could be anything. Could be anything. Okay. And it literally was everything and anything from sports to uh, unicorns. <laughs> to, uh, okay. A town song. There were quite a few. Um, so we each had performances at both campuses. Um, and so this is just one snapshot of one, two from uh, Rochester. Class's personality. It was kind of cool to see. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Naturally. Um, so we will have another residency with the White River Valley players in the spring. Um, that's a great. That's a so, great way for them to, to, you know, be interested in reading and writing. Yes. Too. They yeah. loved it, and then yeah. he also does a bunch of his own songs with them, and yeah. so they had mm -hmm. um, a great time with it. That's it. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. Is there any yeah. comments or? Uh, did they do that too? I was going to say, because Claire has had some. Bears. It's about bears. Yeah. Yeah. She's been yeah. home and just like, I'm like, where did you get this song? Yeah. <laughs> Just bears in Rochester was dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> it's an animal. Yes. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I had a, an idea for a future celebration of learning uh, uh, featuring our, our said coach of the year basketball. <laughs> and I'm wondering whether Patrick might, uh, with uh, coordination with, with Lindy, 
Damn. have an exhibit of you know uh, three-point shooting and foul <laughs> shooting and uh and seeing uh, the kids bounce a basketball i don't know if that's anything to me would be fun to see the use of the gym and kids you know have, having fun however you're organized next i just think oh, yeah, yeah, that is um <laughs> where i moved in 2001 the, the prior owner was the basketball coach at he was, coach. was yeah. he yeah yeah. And uh, yeah. so I thought, my gosh, isn't it a great tradition that Vulture Mountain continues <laughs> yeah, uh, on the court? So anyway, that's that's excellent. Thank whatever you. you. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, uh, reports to the board. Superintendent's report. Good evening. Sorry, I'm joining you virtually tonight. I was hopeful that my family was going to be returning, and they missed their connector flight. So I'm actually going to end up having to go pick them up from a rental place, but they're driving up from New York City. So anyways, I, I apologize that I'm not there in person. Um, one of the things I wanted to start with and just highlight, uh, we had four successful budget um, approvals um, over the last uh, 24 hours. And uh, so hopefully that is um, a preview of what we'll be able to, to accomplish in our set here in May in, in Granville Hancock. Um, you have my report in hand, but one of the things I wanted to, to do is just dig in a little bit into S56 slash H208, which is a pre-K slash child care bill. I provided you some updates on that yesterday um, to the full board, so you all should have received that information. To summarize that, I think that there's um, some momentum within committee to possibly have a study committee um, take place further on child care and pre-K with the notion of gathering more information to then reintroduce a new bill um, next year. And so we'll continue to follow that closely. Just to remind folks, that bill, what it would have done is um, required school districts that operate elementary schools to provide pre-K five days a week, full day pre-K programming for four-year-olds and three-year-olds who qualify for services via triple E or IEP. It would result in us getting 1.0 FTE for students, where right now we get 0.46 for a pre-K student. Um, we are, are offering full day a uh, four-year-old programming in our pre-K at Stockbridge right now, we would need to be doing a little bit of adjustment in Rochester, um, which I think Lindy is working on doing some adjustments in Rochester for next year in regards to pre-K anyways, um, to try to increase the length of our student day. Um, but know that um, the big change for our families is, is that they become accustomed for us to provide three-year-old programming for all three-year-olds. Um, and what this bill would do was would place the responsibility of three-year-old programming back on child care providers, private um, or nonprofit centers. Um, and there would not be any funding that would follow that directly from the school district. That funding would come through subsidy. Um, and they were gonna increase the threshold for subsidy so that more families would be able to qualify for subsidy to assist with child care. So that's, that's the premise of that bill, is that by having all four-year-olds serve via public schools, it would create more opportunity for um, three-year-olds and under birth to three to have access at private or nonprofit um, care centers and that four-year-olds would re receive five days a week um, public pre-K. Amy. What does that do for the uh, pre-K choice that families currently have for four-year-olds? Would that, that eliminate that? Would that? Go away. that would go away. Okay. So Act 166, as proposed, would come off the books and be replaced by this bill. Got it, thank you. But again, there's some discussion with it. There was a new revision um, that I had sent you yesterday in regards to committee that was essentially scrapping the bill in, in favor of a study committee um, to then look in, and take further action next year. Uh, um, <clears throat> so 
talking about three-year-olds potentially now being required to go to private uh, daycare. Um, does the state see that as a potential issue of not having enough? Because I know that that is an issue. <laughs> so I'm just curious what their thoughts are on that or if, they, if they're not really prepared to, to think about that, depending on location and where we are in the state. Well, that's that's what I was trying to to allude to, right? Is that I think that they're recognizing there's problems with the bill, Patrick, and so I think that that's why they may look to do some further studying on it. Um, I had said before that I thought that this bill was gonna. I didn't see as much momentum for something to happen with this bill um, because I I do think that there's been concerns raised about does it actually increase capacity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It feels like it's a forward step in some aspects and a backward step in others. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And then, so the other big one is S66, which also has just had a redrafting happen in the House Education Committee. Um, and so the S66 as constructed would have had significant implications for the Rochester Stockbridge District and any district that has um, school choice. And so it was gonna do two uh, things fundamentally. One, it was going to cap um, the, um, the number of districts that a de district could designate for students to attend at three, which currently is in statute. That's where that number came from. So currently in statute, school districts can decide to to designate up to three receiving schools. That's where that number three came from within S66. So it was gonna require districts to designate no more than three. And then what it was also gonna do is only allow public funds to go to public schools or the four historical academies. And this of course was all in response to Carson V. Macon and for the, the state to try to um, counteract Carson v. Macon with a bill that didn't allow public funds to then go to a religiously affiliated schools. The, if you look into the current bill that's drafted in the House Ed Committee, it requires um, some assurances from schools, but it does not provide any method for schools to then say, if you don't meet these assurances, we won't provide tuition. And so it, it doesn't really, it does not um, actually deal with Carson V. Macon around public funds going to religiously affiliated schools. What it does do is try to provide some parameters around what independent schools should be doing, but it does not give any um, ability for the sending district to not provide funding. What it does do is outline some things and, and you can read it around if schools are not meeting assurances that then it would go to the State Board of Education and then the State Board would take it up. Um, so it, it's really a 180 to S66 in regards to responding to Carson V. Macon. I'm, I'm not certain where that's going to end up. Um, it does seem like, one, we have a pretty new um, body in regards to representatives. Uh, there's 50 new representatives in Montpelier. Um, and so, and it also, what I'm hearing is that House and Senate leadership is um, not necessarily ready to wrestle with S66. Um, that they're getting a lot of feedback and not necessarily ready to take it up. So we'll continue to follow that closely. And um, again, both of these bills, which carried a lot of uh, press and coverage early, seem like maybe they're gonna end up um, not happening and, and maybe be some study committees that will come back uh, next year. But I will continue to update you. And those are the updates I have currently right now. Yeah, for uh, our district to have to designate um, three schools is pretty um, dramatic. That's yeah. hard. <laughs> um, so, and it doesn't seem like that has anything to do with the, um, 
you know, with the, with Carson versus. Mm. No, you know, I, I actually think that that, I think there's other things that got slipped into this bill. And I think one of them was um, really changing the landscape of school choice within the state of Vermont. I think that that, I do think it was intentional or why that was put in there. And I do think it was, it was, it was partly in regards to that. But you are feeling that there's, it's, it's not getting a lot of traction right now. Um, I mean, is there something we should be doing as a board? You should continue to reach out to your legislators. Yeah, I mean, that that's the, the best thing you can do. Um, and Granville Hancock has reached out to their representatives. Um, and so, you know, I think if you have a strong opinion as a as a board member, and I, and I also say this to the community, and I've said it at a, at each annual school district meeting, those are the folks that we should be connecting with. Um, the, you know, my sense of the number three, even early on, was that that number was going to change. I think that they've heard a lot of testimony on that and recognize that 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 number really had a lot to do with what was uh, previously on the books around boards being able to designate up to three schools. The, the other piece I wanted to mention real quick is there does seem to be really good momentum. And I, and I had put this in my um, email to the full board yesterday. So you all received it around universal meals. And I'm feeling very optimistic in regards to uh, a bill coming to fruition there. I, the only thing that I have um, a question about with that bill is that I wish they would diversify the revenue stream to cover the cost of universal meals. Right now, the proposal is um, putting it just on the Ed Fund, which would, which would result in a three cent tax increase for everyone. Um, I wish that they would diversify that and look at what other funding streams they might be able to use to help offset the cost and not just have it. Um, sit in the end fund. Did you have? Um, yeah, no. Um, when it, for you know, pertaining to S sixty six, you know, talking about reaching out to yeah. our representatives. Do you think it would be more useful if we had a few of us that wanted to sit down together, like a subcommittee, write something together? Like send something as, as a board. board, you know. I feel like that might be a little more um, might stand out right. a little bit more. And I believe that's what um, Hancock and Granville did as a board. They wrote a letter and with the support of the select board behind them as well, because I saw they all signed it. I mean, I, I certainly feel a little more passionate about it just because of the situation I had, because I was in Stockbridge, had school choice. I went to Bethel through my sophomore year, and then I had the opportunity to go to a sports academy in Lake Placid. Mm -hmm. And so I had a scholarship that paid a portion of my tuition, then the town paid like an average of what they were giving yep. other students, and I had a full ride to a school in New York and was able to stay there for two years and do what I love to do. Yep. So, and that was a huge part of my life. So I just feel like we're limiting Opportunities, potential right. and opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you absolutely could decide to put a pen and letter together as a board, um, or you could all frame a similar letter and then send it in individually. I think there's power in both. I think we've seen that in regards to how we handled the state board um, in regards to Lincoln. I, I think we both. Um, approaches have been successful. Okay. Well, do you guys want to just individually? Yeah, and, I'm ready to learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, why don't we? Yeah. And it's okay to um, to share those around, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. How about I, I'll, I'll, I'll write one as a draft and yeah. send it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Check it out. <laughs> she writes good. So, so. Easy now. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Well, it's it's it it it's an important it's an issue for important. my situation. Yeah, so exactly our situation. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, I would suggest just review what I sent you and um, just find some key components 
in regards to what you would want changed, like the number three, j just, you know, I think if you can give them some um, really clear, articulate information about what parts of the bill that you, that you find or oppose, I, I find that I think in general that can sometimes go further um, than just opposing the whole bill. Um, that, anyways, that's my suggestion. If you oppose the whole bill, that's that's fine too. I'm just saying, if there if there are fine points, I do think that that can really help with the drafting process. Okay. Yeah, they great. Is that it for your report? Yeah. Unless folks have any other questions, I just wanted to highlight um that tomorrow night we do have our wrvsu community school conversation happening in the stockbridge school um in regards to mathematics and i had i had put that in my report but i just wanted to highlight that and dinner is going to be provided as well as child care and and um we're looking forward to hopefully a really good turnout excellent uh, jamie i had a question on that or to, to lindy in your description uh, tomorrow night's uh, get together, which I think is fantastic, and I hope I can make it. Um, you talked about getting the input from parents about what are they looking for, what would they like to see what to do with mathematics, and it seems to me it'd also be an opportunity for um, for us um, to explain to the parents kind of the philosophy of learning or the the, the approach that we're taking and uh, why it's so important and then also how the parents role here can be so important and I know I'm kind of allergic to even though I did quite a lot of math and finance but you know what parents can do or what you can take home for the parents to do and I think I didn't get that sense of that Jamie in your description so my my question is is it two-way on this it is two-way but I asked Bonnie to put a description out that let families know they're going to have a voice and not just be lectured at. I think a lot of times when schools host things, it tends to be a one way, like you just receive information and we really want to be, have it be interactive. So that's why we try to emphasize that. But yes, we will certainly be front loading some information as well. Thank you. All right, there's no further questions for the superintendent. We'll move on to our principal's report. Yeah, so you have my principal's report in front of you. I think um, the bigger thing is probably around some building updates in that the fire alarm project, there's just one more alarm light that they have to put in. But other than that, that is officially replaced. <laughs> That's great. You probably walked right by it and saw it. Um, and then also, uh, a company will be coming in to clean the mildew and mold from the high school at the end of this week. Okay. So that those two projects will finally be wrapped up. Um, seems like we've been in school and then we haven't been in school and now we're out of school <laughs> for a day. Um, it's been it was pretty busy right before vacation because we had the uh, John Gilmore residency, but we're also starting to. Uh, you're up for our state testing that will happen in grades three through six in May, and that just sneaks up on us quickly. So we're already starting to plan um, testing schedules and prep for that. How we do that, I think. I think. Mm. Excellent. Are there any questions for Lindy regarding her report? Sounds like some great stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. It's great. Okay, we'll move on to the business manager's report then. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Do you have my report, which outlines what's happening in the business office for the month the month of March. Sorry, I'm a little tongue-tied tonight. Um, so if there's any questions on that, otherwise I will move on to the fiscal year 23 budget projections. No, so no on, okay, on the expenditure side, we have um, a projected area of savings down in salaries, which is budgeted versus what we issued for contracts of $89,747. 
We have health insurance, um, budget versus enrollment, uh, projected savings there of $39,493. And then the tuition, we have budget versus invoice to date of $91,743. So current projected potential savings is $220,000. $983. On the revenue side, based on what was invoiced for tuition, we are off um, about $98,732 versus what was budgeted. We haven't received um, all of the miscellaneous revenue that we budgeted for nor uh, the rental income. We have gotten $602 more in donations and um, interest we've um, already exceeded what was budgeted. Uh, so we've got about $3,400 extra there. And then the transportation aid, when we got the uh, determination from the Agency of Education on what it would be, um, it looks like we're gonna get about $4,700 more there as well. So projected deficit on the revenue side, $91,777. Offset that by the potential area of savings on the expenditure total. Uh, projected surplus could be $129,206 as of the close of second quarter. And if there's any questions on that? Uh, yes, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, um, same question I asked at the uh, SU meeting, uh, at your estimated surplus. Um, you think going forward to the end of this fiscal year um, that that number looks, you're feeling pretty good about that or is there just things coming out of thin air? And My and only area of concern, Bill, would be tuition in this situation if there is any children and students that we haven't been billed for yet if that comes through that will obviously reduce uh, that projected surplus in the tuition okay and then obviously if you have um, contracted budget versus contracted salaries if there's any areas um, where we have any need for additional substitutes anything like that that could potentially offset that number but otherwise, I'm pretty confident in those numbers as far as the salaries and the health insurance. And if anyone has a life event, um, you know, they have children between now and the close of the fiscal year, a family plan is $25,000. So that could potentially reduce that. So those are just some of the things that could change those, those potential surpluses. Okay. The other question has to do with the tuition revenue reduction and one of the goals we set at the RSED was that we wanted to try to keep increasing uh, the attractiveness of our RSED system schools to encourage parents to send their that, that are in choice towns to send their kids uh, to our school and um, because every kid that comes here that's a revenue versus um, not so I I wanted to get some explanation for this down, this this hundred thousand dollars swing. Are we? What's happening there? Um, is there just one group that had a lot of choice students? Like last year's sixth grade yep. class over here had multiple Granville Hancock students, and it didn't quite offset. But on the flip side, we there are several Pittsfield residents that came to Southbridge. Yeah, so just. Um, some of it has to do with, you know, we can't add kids that don't live in twist <laughs> towns. Yeah. But uh, last year's particular group, each in each campus had school choice students that had tuition in. So they just, the numbers aren't, like the classes aren't as high as large either. If that makes sense. Like our, our student population has decreased. Do you have a sense who, who's our major competition here, K through six? In um, Stockbridge, in with Pittsfield, it would be Killington, and with um, here, I yeah, Ripton it's kind of split. I, Jamie and Tara, what would you say? It, it's, it's Warren and Ripton. Warren and Ripton, yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. Question: This has an as of date of the end of last year. Is that correct? Or, 
or is that? Yeah, that's the, the end of quarter two, December 31st. This is it. So this is the end of the, um, would you say the second quarter? Yep, quarter two. Quarter two, okay. Um, and um, I asked Lindy the other day, uh, we had a uh, repair to um, a the bus power pedestal out here in Rochester. And um, Lindy said that the we will get a reimbursement is from the transportation company. Is that something that's going to come through on one of these revenue um, sides here, or, or how how do we see that? When you get a reimbursement for an expense, it's actually the revenues credited to the expense line to reduce the expense. Okay, that's uh, that was what, kind of what my question was. Thank you. Yep. Great. Uh, is there any further questions for Tara on <coughs> this? Okay, there's no further questions. We will move on to full board updates. Bill, do you want to update? <laughs> my memory is. Uh, I know. So that's <laughs> and I was fumbling <laughs> on my notebook and. That's the disadvantage of having a notebook is uh, you're supposed to absorb it up here rather than. It was a good meeting. Uh, yeah. Patrick, bail, bail me out, or maybe I'll can. I was there remember too. Some was, things. We uh, talked a lot. Go read the minutes. <laughs> one thing I can remember is that um, um, there's a real initiative to, uh, and Justine's on the committee to develop um, a mentoring notebook uh, manual for new board members and uh, also for current board members. And uh, the idea is that it, it shouldn't take a kind of search and hunt and all over to figure out the lay of the land and ability of new board members to contribute to, um, to their boards. And so uh, that's coming along really well. Uh, the, um, the, the new member committee um, ask for feedback and they're going to do another, I think another round and that will be, uh, I think ready in early April, if I'm not mistaken. So I was, I was pleased with that. Um, on negotiations, uh, there, there we just, we're not meeting right now with, um, special educators and that's because they're still working on, um, doing, uh, certain things that they need to do to respond to our requests for information. So we're hoping that will, We'll, we'll uh, move along more quickly in the coming weeks. Um, Patrick, you have some other things you want to add to that? Uh, mm, no, I mean we did. We spent some time talking about uh, S sixty six and yeah, that's um, uh, yeah. And there was MTSS uh, data report and yep. director of social services gave a report. Yep. So uh, it was a good meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, the policy committee, reading one of the board's civility policy and reading one of the special education policy. So board civility will be going back based on feedback we received at the full board to committee um, to try to try to better define um, in regards to the policy, what it means to conduct official board business. Um, and adequate that adequate that we would expect um, board members to be conducting themselves in in regards to if school district business comes up and you're out in the public. I think that the committee wants to make certain that this policy is clear that it's not just when you're in a um, meeting like you are tonight as a board that as board members, if you're being asked questions about um, the workings of the school and that you're discussing it as a board member with your board member hat on that um, that you're going to be held to being respectful um, and i think that that was really the request of the full board when they asked for this policy to be um drafted so we're gonna we're gonna be working on that um and i appreciate the feedback we've received on that and certainly I think Patrick and I are open to more feedback if folks have other thoughts on that policy. And then the other policy is uh, required policy by state statute when special education 
law change last year. Um, this um, language actually was provided directly from the agency and vetted by the VSBA. My hope would be um, that we will get this ready for approval um, next month. We will warn it for action at the full board meeting with um, the edit to um, have along with relevant regulations and applicable laws come after um, a semicolon. So the the goal would be to get this um, implemented um, next month and warn for, for action. And just to uh, add to or make sure that part of the new member manual is going to be uh, uh, vocabulary, educational vocabulary. So you read the initials, whatever you want to call them, you understand, or you, you flip so you know. And we have a couple here that are brand new versus FAP, F A P E, which is free appropriate public education. So those of us that miss that in our uh, learning how to be a good board member might have that. And even <laughs> SEA, which used to be a, a consulting firm where I came from, a state education agency. So this would be. Um, um, I think a dictionary that continue to expand. I agree, <laughs> for sure. Okay, um, yes, any questions? Yes, go ahead. I guess my only comment would just be, you know, talking about the civility. I know I had mentioned something about how, we're, you know, I think Justine, I think, can contest about Facebook having some issues with community members on there and kind of calling out board members, and it's just, you know, can be a little inappropriate, puts us in a, in a difficult position. One of the issues was uh, uh, that was brought up was that we're not using the Facebook page. And I think that we need to have a discussion around that, whether that's something that we are to continue to use. And if so, who, who's going to do that? Or my personal opinion would be that we don't use that and that we direct people to our website because we have website now and it has all the information that's needed and Facebook tends to be a place for people to complain and you know so if we want them to complain we invite them to our meetings <laughs> Jamie yeah I looked back in the notes and I will um, uh, I'll forward them along I believe when we updated the new websites to Rochester Stockbridge and launched the Rochester Stockbridge Facebook page as a board, you had had you had a discussion about leveraging the school Facebook page to communicate and not to continue to use a separate board page. So I will dig those notes up um, and then send them along to all of you because I'm pretty certain you already had that discussion back when we um, rolled out the new school Facebook page along with the website. What could it just be as simple as having a link each month after our meeting directing on Facebook directing them to the website for minutes, agendas, you know, discussion items? I don't know. We can just post the link to so like yeah. the agenda. That's what right I'm saying. On the That's what I mean. that yeah, can, yeah. Or is yeah. that even necessary? Like get off of Facebook and go check out another website. You know, yeah. <laughs> we have other districts that post the warnings in the minutes monthly on their school page, their school Facebook page. I don't go to I don't, check, I don't check the weather or the news on Facebook. You can turn comments <laughs> off, <laughs> just names. <laughs> yeah, I um the thing about the I had a conversation with folks on you know on Facebook regarding this and the pro part of the problem with the um being directed to the website was that you're attached to google and attached to google drive and google docs and someone was like i don't really have google i don't really know how to use google you know we used to just post the image of the agenda and the image of the minutes on the facebook page before the website was launched so I, it just depends on how much we want to engage on facebook and and cater to that because it's a I think it's a choice and I think we should decide as a board and then do it going forward or you know or not do it because it does open up a, a you know a forum you no know, you know just even posting an agenda or minutes it is an open forum there so I do understand and hear you about the fact that our agenda and our minutes are 
part of a Google Drive. And that is hard that you have to have a Google account, you know, or when you get on there, it asks you what Google account do you want to use to look at this? Yeah. This stuff. And that kind of feels like, well, you know, what am I putting out there then? You know, why don't, why isn't it just a PDF? Right. You know? you, you, anybody can look at it. You don't necessarily need an account, but it does put open up you are going into google land and if you don't understand it or whatever i don't know that was the complaints like you have to figure out google to get into the doc oh. or whatever anyway all right yeah if you could um look up those notes jamie and i think um you know we could share that around so that we can maybe talk about this next meeting and have, make a clear decision on it yeah. great thank you Yes, Bill. Um, um, yeah, I like what Patrick's points are, and it goes back to civility. Um, we're not only talking about my uh, uh, thing was I bump into somebody at uh, picking up some donuts at Shaw's, and uh, they are very unhappy with what we're doing here, here, here. And I, I'm a member of the school board, so I cannot explode and tell them that they're all no matter what happens. But it seems to me that Patrick talked about Facebook or any social medium that, that our obligation to be civil and to show an example for our children um, goes to all mediums, of, whether it's in person or email. Uh, boy, I learned a long time ago, never say anything negative in e email. If you want to talk, complain about somebody, give them the courtesy of, of talking to them face to face. But I think we have an opportunity through the civ civility policy to make sure we need to be civil in all the mediums that we uh, do to communicate with, with each other in the educational community. All right, is there any further comments on this? Yeah, it, yes, as far as talking in, in public, I think it's also easy to like be in this gray area where you're talking about opinions and things like that. And whereas we are, you know, representative of the board, I think it's just just better in general to direct them to meetings instead of get, oh. even getting into that. The response, yeah. like the, they should ask the board the question, not you individually, in my opinion. So yeah, well, I think that I, I mentioned that the full board that I felt like if you feel like you're in a position like that in public and you feel like it's you feel the energy is getting a little tense, that's when you just stop and say, you know what, I think I think that you should come to the next next month's meeting and you should voice your opinion there to the whole board. Yeah, I can't I can't speak for the board. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's OK to not have the answer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, great. Uh, we will move on to the uh, final draft of the 23-24 school budget. And, yeah, Tara, we're being, op we're being yeah. optimistic that it's the final draft. <laughs> so we heard the board's direction um, last month and so it resulted in uh, Lindy and I meeting. Lindy and I met twice. Uh, Lindy, Tara, and I met, and actually Tara and I met once as well. Um, in regards to working on both the expenditure and revenue sides of the budget, um, and so I'll, I'll try to hit some highlights here, and then Lindy and Tara, feel free to jump in um, with what I missed. So the biggest area in change in regards to the expenditure side was that. We had budgeted for two regular ed FTE paraprofessionals. Um, we've been able to contract um, services through the SU um, for behavioral interventionists at one of the campuses, which is going to be able to meet our needs and going to be able to be funded via um, the special services department and budget through special education. So we're not going to need that second regular ed paraprofessional. So there were some definite savings um, observed there. Also in regards to changes, um, there were some adjustments made in the expenditure lines. Um, one was in regards to Lindy looking at some actuals in regards to substitutes. So we were able to make some adjustments there. 
I was able to make some adjustments in legal services. We haven't been, um, and these are based off of actuals from the prior two years. Um, so we were able to make some adjustments there. We were able to keep intact the transfer to the reserve fund, which is what we had heard the board had a real desire to keep that in place. Um, so we were able to make an adjustment there. We adjusted the fuel for the high school as discussed at the last meeting to a third. So there was definitely some savings seen there since the last draft that you saw. Um, and then Tara and Lindy, any other? Those to me were the, the largest areas, but I could have missed something, Lindy and Tara. No, those were the largest areas. Other things were based on actuals, um, like supply, just a little bit here, a little bit there, not anything major. It adds up all together, but those were the big highlights. And so more you language. No, keep going, Lindy. A word language, I believe we cut down to 0 0.2 in this budget. I don't, did we do that last one? I can't. It was this budget. You're correct. Right, the word Which language. Which is what we had. We tried to increase it to 0.4 in the prior draft. Now, right now it's remains okay. the same at 0.2. Okay. So that was the other big change personnel-wise. Um, I noticed, Tara, that there was also a lot of movement um, in the workman's comp uh, categories and um, the notes from previous budgets said increase due to projected rate change. And so I was wondering um, what had changed there for us to be able to, to decrease those lines. I went through and made some uh, adjustments based on some of the salary projections that we had in there, but also um, brought it down on a couple of the areas like for education and just reduced the projections on that one. So the workers, workman's comp, that's our workman's comp earnings? Or? Yes, that's what you pay for workers' compensation insurance. Okay, and you said because, say it again, I don't, I don't understand how so, we've contributed it by so much. Medical rates are going up almost 13%. So that also okay. impacts workers' compensation rates and what we pay to workers' compensation claims. Okay. And we have had a substantial increase in workers' compensation claims throughout the supervisory union this year, which is going to increase my loss ratio with the carrier, which then also increases my rates. Right. So how did we were we able to reduce the, the amounts on this latest budget by so much? I reduced what we were charging per one hundred dollars of payroll for teachers. I brought that down some. Um, and then I also brought down what we were charged um, for support staff and kept the custodial because that's um, our highest workers compensation rate is custodial. That's over two dollars per one hundred dollars of payroll. So I just reduced those down um, to a, a lower increase for those individual rates. Okay. Um, question? Yes. Yeah. Um, Tara, where's the line? What's the line item for fuel for heating? Um, uh, uh, keeping our high school building intact um, over the winter time for fuel. Fuel oil is rolled up under 2610 function code six or object code 624. Got it. So it's all. Combined. Yeah, page seven. So that's that's all. It's it's the the two elementary schools and in the high school. Well, remember, Bill, we weren't we won't be using heating fuel for Rochester Elementary next year. All right, that's right, got it. That's where that heating is. Mm. That's under wood pellets. Six, wood, six yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end, um, the budget that's bef before you, before Tara goes into revenue in the tax sheet, is up 5.02% um, or 222578 
What was that number last one? It was eight. It was eight. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what? great. I mean, that's you guys good. did really good. And do you yeah. feel that um, this budget still um, is offering our kids what they need? Absolutely. And yeah. our teachers. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Because um, you know that is the most important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, agree. No, I. I think that's pretty good considering the inflation that we're dealing with right now. Right. You know. <laughs> right. It's true. When you I look mean, at that, the that, price uh, of everything just keeps going up. Yeah. How can we not expect? Yeah. The I mean, budget to keep going up. It's not going to go down. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> Costs more for everything. Mm -hmm. Um. Does anybody have questions on the expenditure budget for Tara? Okay, well then, what do we move? We move on to the tax rate, or do we move on to next? Oh, my thing's a little out of order. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Revenue. Revenue. Go back to the revenue. So I made two changes on the revenue. Jamie had me increase the balance carryover from prior year surplus to 175000 And then we found out that the trustees of public funds in Stockbridge is going to be providing an additional $5,000. So you'll see those are the two changes on the revenue side. Tanner. Just for, for clarification, um, that's how much would be requesting of the trustees the trustees have not approved that um and i think there's sound reasons why they should uh, i don't know but again it's it's they have not seen this or or voted this at, at this time okay. um the projected fund balance is 169 so where are we going to get 175 i didn't update that i apologize um, that, that's totally my fault. Um, last projection was two hundred seventeen thousand. Okay, it's totally my fault. Sorry. I was like, where are we going to find that? Um, and uh, when do when is that number finalized? That for the is that when the audit is finalized? Yes. So it's okay. when all the audits are finalized, SU audit is finalized. So if there's any additional assessment that we have to make out to the member districts, that obviously has an impact on your general fund balance. Um, and then once the auditors have um, corrected in your audit, the child nutrition program, that's um, what I'm waiting for in our SUD's last draft. Um, so I will say it's no longer projected once I have a final audit. Yes. Okay. And um, do where are we with with that? Is that soon? I'm or? waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to correct the child nutrition side of things. Um, and uh, so I would tell you that we're 98 percent certain that that's that's going to be your balance. I mean, okay. you'll definitely have the 175. Okay. And then um, logistically, the balance of that we go to the voters and ask them to put it into a um into a uh, reserve fund that's what we have to do with the rest of it okay uh, yep go ahead sorry a question the um part of our fiscal plan was to tap the endowment funds that are under the control of the um of the, the of, the, of this organization so the budget that we're looking at uh, this evening does that build in that expectation you, that can't, you can't budget for those funds you can't put that in your revenue i understand that but i'm saying my question is that um not being in there does that mean we we're going to have unanticipated revenue coming in that um or is it anticipated already reflecting here and it's just going to that revenue for those who are going to go into the general fund, they all stay in their respective funds. So it, that doesn't actually come into your general fund. So funds of that nature are permanent funds. Your investment funds are considered permanent funds. And they live outside of the general fund. And then the school board would need to request, or Lindy, sorry, would need to request of the school board the utilization of any of those fund balances that are available 
for youth to do specific programs, just like she needs to do when she comes to ask you for building reserve funds or capital reserve funds. The utilization of that is at the, the direction of the board. You have to have a specific purpose to use those funds, as Amy explained, what each one of those funds are available to be used for. Okay. Uh, can I ask that, uh, that there's a line item like we have for reserve funds that we have something for a targeted for our endowment that that are going to be available at the request of our sub uh, and voting at, at some time in the future for specific uses. I, I, Amy provided I, all of that. Yep. So I think Amy's worked hard on this. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, totally giving her all the credit here. I mean, she provided that report um, to the board, which has what the fund balances are and what they can be used for. Are you kind of asking, Bill, that we say this year we're going to allocate $5,000 and when Lindy has decided there's something she wants to use that for, she comes in, but she knows that we're okay with using like $5,000 of it this year. Is that kind of what you're? Well, my thing is that it, it'd be helpful for Lindy and her team if, if she knew that if needed, we would have X number of dollars that she could tap with the approval of this board. Available so it's a different right. if it's 5,000 or 50,000. So right. and right. it isn't like she's just throwing money to the wind, but uh, there are opportunities out there or special needs that uh, it'd be helpful to, for her to know that. And so uh, it seems like it would be useful for us as a board to clarify how much each uh, year that would be available this coming year um if and when those needs occur um then we have, we have an understanding there uh, i kind of agree with that um it's hard and for Lydia to not know that yeah i just don't something. think you can put it in as a line item like you're no i'm not saying a line item. Okay. i'm just saying it's just it could be a separate page but it's just um it's right. there right yeah. it's it could be not voted yet but it's uh, that's our intention to have it available if and when it's needed. Um, that's Yeah, it, it just to be really clear though, it can't be part of the budget, right? Like okay. As a board, you could provide a memo to administration declaring yep. which funds are available, right? But what it can't be, those are separate from the general fund. So we can't show those expenses as an expense in this budget or as a corresponding revenue in this budget. I mean, we need to do the same thing for capital improvements too. That that's different though, because the capital improvement funds have been voted on by your vote voters, and they those have been designated for the board in regards to being able to put revenue in, right? And then they're audited by our auditors, and then you see them in your audit every year. No. And again, like Lindy said, it's because it was originally tax dollars that were given yeah. that were um, to for the school to use to run the school. And then we asked the, the taxpayers who said, thanks for giving us all this money. We have this left over. Is it okay if we put it into a reserve fund instead of No, and I, and I understand here? that. It's, I guess what I'm saying is is before we get to a budget, we need to know the improvements that we want to tackle for that upcoming year, so we know what we need. Even if we're gonna use it from our reserve fund, right. we wanna know like, okay, we need to replace the windows right. here. It's that list that we were so, talking right. about. Right, and so, so Patrick, I'm, got, I'm sorry, a bunch of those items were spelled out in the strategic plan. Hmm. So I'm gonna request that the board looks back at the strategic plan. There are, there are dates and items that are big ticketed items that EEI provided us that that we speak to and the administration did come forward to you with over almost a well you know a 1.7 million dollar project for this coming summer and we said yeah. you were going to need to use your reserve funds you just drained a bunch of your reserve funds so mm -hmm. my advice to the board would be to look at that strategic plan and see we're going to need to put some significant money away over the upcoming years to even be able to tackle some of these phase two and phase three projects. Yeah, and that's to remember when at the end of the year there's a surplus, we decide what we want to do with it. Well, that's kind of, yeah. Well, I meant uh, put it for 
capital A away. So, so if you look, way. why we picked these ones were, were based off of needs based on what we got, but based on draining your reserve funds and just projecting where we're going to be in regards to fiscal budgeting, it's not going to get easier. This year was hard. I will tell you it's going to get more difficult as federal funds dry up in the state. So, you know, what you're looking at right there is well over $400,000 that we're hoping to put away by no later than 28. So that's why that 65,000 is really important. Because the goal would be that your capital improvement funds will be able to pay for these large projects. And, you know, and the roof is a big one and certainly be able to tackle the ceiling tile. That is something we had talked about last year with the EI. It just didn't play out that we had the funds to do so right now um, without putting more money away. And I know, I know there were, we were having a discussion with them about, you know, replacing windows, you know, insulation values, maybe not being the best, but in their opinion that that's not something they wanted to tackle first just because of payback which is understandable we're not getting really necessarily a, a large payback in that but there is also just needing upkeep and yeah you might not necessarily get payback out of upkeep but you don't need a window falling out of a building or you know you want to be able to open up well you certainly have you have an operations budget to do a window right but yeah. if we don't want to go to bond that's why we have to put money away and prioritize projects over the next 10 years yeah nope. i think you're just no. also trying to figure out what is the list of well, that's, that's, that's what i'm saying is like I, I know it's not all going to happen overnight but we really need to do a walk around and say okay that you know this is immediate this is this can wait three years this you know like where where what is the life expectancy of of different parts of the building and how can we prioritize and allocate a list of what we want to do each year for the next 10 years and know know what we're doing in five years you know that's we'll replace well, that these were, I, I maybe the facilities committee needs to meet again these were the big projects i had designated for us as yeah priorities. Hmm. No, and I, and I agree. I'd be happy to walk through with the facilities team again. I just think what we have to get realistic about is what we can afford over the next 10 years. And it, it, again, if you look, we have over 400,000 just in three items. Right. Mm -hmm. So I agree with the windows may be the next thing. Um, but again, we that that may be in looking out in like, 2032 and so based on what i felt like we were putting away and knowing that we were going to use up a lot i mean if you look we've done a ton of work here in phase one but we need to now build up our reserves again to continue that progress yeah uh, great thank you okay um take it away tara so the last piece is the tax sheet. So with those changes that we made to the budget expenditure and the revenues, it changes your education per pupil spending to twenty thousand three forty five nine fifty two. Equalized tax rate would be one point three one four four, a reduction of thirteen point six eight cents over the current preliminary tax rate. In Rochester, after the CLA, it would be a savings on the tax rate of 0 0.0068. And on Stockbridge, after the CLA, it would be an increase of 11.93 cents. Thirteen cents. That's incredible. That's an incredible amount to, to reduce them to find 13 cents. Um, and of course, because of the calculations with the CLA, that's the only thing that is making it so we don't see that 13 cents savings. Um, I think you guys did a, a great job 
coming down from the uh, 20, 22 cents. Yeah. 22 cents. That was the original. Yeah, that was uh, last. Last meeting. Last, yep. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Well, I want to uh, commend uh, Tara, Lindy, and, and Jamie for really trying to work the budget even further. It's not easy to do. I mean, uh, we look at all the drafts, and every one of those drafts were real. I mean, they reflected r real needs and real desires for our kids. And to be moving it down, uh, we're now talking about 7.4% um, uh, increase. Um, and that's that's um but i you know I, i'm one of three uh, the, the stock region has got a bigger hit this year than, than rochester so i think justine should should weigh in and at your comfort level with this and same with patrick um, um <clears throat> like you know i think that the message that we need to get across to the, the voters is that this is a reflection of the cla and not not necessarily our our budget or the high school <laughs> um you know i think there's a lot of residents out there that look at that and they go that's the high school <laughs> you know that number is the high school and which it's not it's, it's at all. not at all um by any means so it's, it's how, how what's the easiest quickest way of communicating that you know well, I thought, um, and I don't know if I can find put my finger on it right now, but I thought that the pie chart in our that really shows exactly the percentage of, um, and it shows the buildings being like this little sliver, yeah. um, and you know tuition really being a a, a big one, mm -hmm. right? Where the increases are, where the numbers, the big numbers lie, right? I would recommend, and Jamie had shared with me that Tara had done this for other districts, but in where I live, what we got was what it actually meant per your 100,000 taxes. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. how much your taxes were actually going to go up. I think that's the bottom line people need to see. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I and think the uh, bill, and built. bill provided a chart that shows which, would you say two thirds of our residents um, pay uh, their property tax? off of their income yeah. right. and so I think between the two yeah the homestead. Homestead. and yes. that's going to be my projection is that's actually going to go down again um thanks to the state um and what they're giving in one hand which is the income sensitivity which is just oh, yeah. so progressive and important allowing us to have a quality education and affordable in our rural communities uh, the one third, however, that doesn't get whacked by the common level of appraisal, which in Stockbridge all of a sudden is is a go you know, they're treating us like a gold town. And so, um, uh, what was a reasonable budget increase makes this thing with after CLA even tougher. So, yeah, and we needed to tell that story as best we can. Um, yeah, this is the. Um chart that is produced last year yeah um that it gives a good visual yeah it's a, let's do that again yeah be a nice reminder yeah it's just a reminder Especially because tuition went up right shows mm -hmm. the tuition and and and, and, and i think that's like the medical and, and stuff and we have no control yeah um, sorry we can't control without having the kids suffer yes right uh justine do you have uh any specific comments on this? No, I think what Patrick said is exactly in line with what I am concerned with. I think it's easy, to, you know, I, I think it's easy for folks to just look at numbers and um, I don't know. I don't know how we can hit them in the face with the pie chart, but <laughs> whatever <laughs> it would make them actually look at it as opposed to not pay attention. That's all. Yep. Do you feel that this 11 cents increase um, is uh, palatable. Is it palatable? I mean, I do. I, I do. Like, it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I think. That, so. But no, I think they did such a good job with reducing expenses. I can, would be very concerned that we're going to really start cutting into um, programming and. Oh, yeah. um, 
Well, I start cutting into our kids' education. Yep. yep. So maybe we have a little whipped cream with that pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't we discuss a like a, a sort of a summary of what the CLA means? And maybe um, you know, like add a maybe sort of a note into the, the report um, yeah. on what it means for each town, what mm -hmm. this number represents, and this number There's a lot of people have no idea what and it why is. it's different, yeah. right? Um, well, that's definitely we'll, we'll need that education. I think um, as a as a, a talking point in our mm -hmm. you know annual meeting, and yeah. also mm -hmm. clearly to talk about it in the um, yeah in this book for those that yeah. get it at home. Yeah. Right, educate themselves. Right, because they're. <laughs> well, it is a floor vote this year. It's not Australian ballot. So that's. Oh, so they have to come. To yes, they have to come to, come to, come to, to vote. To vote. Yeah. Oh, and we, and we decided that because I. Can't I think that's remember. further down. No, we're going you got to well, finish uh, the budget. We're going to finish the budget when we get to that. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, mm -hmm. does anybody want to take action on this tonight? All right, well, I you want somebody to look move for it? a motion. I'll also move. Um, um, Lindy, Tara, give me the number we're plugging in for the motion. You want me to type it in the chat? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I make a motion to approve the 2023-2024 budget in the amount of $4,652,963. Okay, I second. Motions have made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? With no discussion, I'll call roll probably the best. Yep. Justine? Aye. Robert? Aye. Jessica? Aye. Bill? Aye. Amy? Aye. Patrick? Aye. So moved. <clears throat> Great. Um, moving on, 8-2. Audit. I already given you that update in our last discussion that I'm just waiting for a revised draft that corrects the child nutrition program. Great. And okay, so final preparation for the annual school district warning. Yeah, so I think what Bill just discussed is the biggest thing. Um, now, all, all of our other current member districts have gone back to their traditional floor votes. The legislature did provide um, authorization for districts due to COVID-19 to um, once again hold informational meetings and more Australian ballot votes if they choose. Um, so that is one of the things we'll need direction from to prepare your um, warning. I would say that that's that's the biggest thing, Tara. Would you agree? Okay. Open for discussion. How uh, soon do we need to have the warning done by? When do we need the warning uh, posted by? Well, we would probably look, Tara. I'm thinking the same week where that we're trying to do with G or the week prior. I mean, ideally, it's a special meeting next week because we want to get it posted by Tara what is it within 30 days between 45 and 30 yeah and we want to get it in the mailer so it has to be posted in your town 30 to 45 days prior to the vote and then we also like I said we want to put the signed warning in your mailer and that has to be in the hands of the voters 10 days prior to the annual meeting and um based on our experience that we had with these last four mailers. Um, there's definitely a delay in the United States Postal Service. So we want to be able to give ample time for that to get delivered. So the target would be to have the mailer done into the printers because you guys go the 
first Tuesday. first Tuesday in May. So ideally, we would want it um, to the printers that first Friday in April. So three weeks, basically, I think, if I look at the calendar. So three weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, definitely will require a special meeting. I think we need to figure out when that would work as well, once you discuss. Um, we'll need to just do this special meeting, our next regular meeting. Before. Special meeting for what? I'm sorry. To approve the warning. Approve the warning. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. It, it won't take much. It'll be quick, but we'll want to get it approved and signed. Okay. Okay, so um, discussion on uh, returning to um, in person um, meeting and voting or take advantage of the uh, COVID situation and do a um, informational meeting and Australian ballot, uh, which we have done the past couple of years. Um, or are we ready to go back to um, our standard? Justin. I think um, if personally, I, I think that more people will get to vote if if we're not in person and we do Australian ballot. I just think people work, people don't have time to go to the meeting. And so that's my personal opinion. I think that we have more participation that way. And I think that's important. Yeah, I think last year, uh, Ethan and I were on the same side on kind of thinking it would be great to get back together again as a as a school community and uh there's something about in person that's that uh, is attractive and i always go back to all the town meetings i've gone to and inevitably there's an issue or a vote that i walked in the door or people walked in and they were thinking one way but after the debate or discussion they learned enough so they go oh and that's the that's the power of a town meeting in, in person. I don't disagree with Justine at all on the number of people that are voting, but what the town meeting allows is that there can be some education, uh, dialogue, conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think that leads to maybe, a, I think, a more informed vote at the end of the day. Given that, we have a responsibility of making sure that our communities come out that value public education and the, and the importance of what we do to educate our children. Um, they attend the meeting and, and uh, listen in, and to vote. So I can swing either way. I just wanted to give you an articulation about um, the, the, what I see as a positive <clears throat> in meeting uh, in person. We would still have an informational meeting even if they were voting on paper, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, meeting was well attended, and I think there was a lot of. Uh, I mean, for one thing, Bill's Bill's charts. I think they really. I think a lot of people attended and paid attention and understood from that meeting, and then voted accordingly. But I don't know how many people actually necessarily voted compared to other years. But I do know certain people were like, "I've never been able to go." So. Mm. Right. Um, where would it be held? Well, it'd either be in Rochester or in Stockbridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> if they yeah. were due to vote back in person in Stockbridge, is that correct, Lindy and Tara? The last well, I, vote was in Rochester? What I have was that the first annual meeting was in 2018 was held in Rochester. The second annual mm -hmm. meeting was held in Stockbridge. The third was in virtual information meeting. The fourth was a virtual information meeting. The fifth last year was a in-person informational meeting in Rochester. It was not an annual meeting. Then I, then so I would really, say that it should be back in Rochester then. Yeah, because mm -hmm. okay. it was right. Okay. So. So Rochester then. <laughs> and remind me again, I'm embarrassed, but I'll just say it again. I know with uh, candidates, uh, we changed recently or a few years ago. So yes. the, the candidates for the, the RSED school board uh, from Stockbridge would be voted by Stockbridge voters. And, and uh, exactly. same thing with Rochester, but the whole budget is just 
commingled. It's commingled, yeah. and it's the it's the majority of those exactly. voting in both communities. It isn't a separate vote. Exactly. Okay, I, I, I saw my memory, but I. And the, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. The the um to vote for uh, board members that is by Australian ballot. Go ahead, Jamie. No, you're right. I just want to remind the board of that, especially those preparing to run. Remember, you have to have your candidate consent form in 30 days prior to have your name on the ballot. And those right now, what your articles of agreement say is because they were revised is that you would vote only for your elected officials via Australian ballot and every other piece of business including the budget would be voted on by the from the floor that's what your articles of agreement are now and what are the um so one of the consent forms the, the, what are the, the candidate the, the candidate uh, petition forms do then march 19th uh, count back 30 days from may 2nd yeah. and is that going to be on our warning, though? What would be on our warning? The the uh, the board members. You uh, never put the, well. With the positions are on the warning, but you don't put the names or anything. That's okay. Just that's that. yeah. okay. That's what I was wondering. All right, so okay. that would be like early April. I think yeah. March. It's March nineteenth. I think it's really? thirty days. I thought it was forty. I am. I thought it was forty-five days. So, um, yeah, maybe now that you say it, maybe the six six Mondays prior to the vote. I think yeah, I think it is. I, Julie, uh, the yes, town six Mondays. Mondays. Yes. You can't make everything consistent. Yeah, no, like I would, I would definitely recommend talking to your um, to the town clerk in Stockbridge and mm -hmm. and getting the paperwork from her and asking her specifically what day she needs it back by because of what day she works etc mm -hmm. um so logistically if we are voting on the floor for our um budget is the australian ballot for the board members happening at that in-person meeting or is that happened earlier in the day or at the polls in our respective towns? Yeah, at the polls throughout the day. Right. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Could it be a hybrid as far as? No, I don't think we could have, we, couldn't have a virtual with people voting correct yeah. right uh, for the budget so um i have enjoyed having the um australian ballot uh, it is traditionally the way um that it, rochester had done their school meetings mm -hmm. they'd have the informational meeting or two and uh oh, yeah and then they would have um australian ballot Good. on voting day um I, I also hear what Bill's saying about, you know, people getting involved, uh, maybe um, changing some minds. Uh, the informational meeting does, does, help fill, does that void. fill that void. Um, yep. But, you know, I, I see value in, in, in each. So I think, but I think too, like having the informational meeting, people that you would want to get that information to, aren't going to go to it and, and they've already right. decided their vote they're mm -hmm. going to go and vote mm -hmm. we're supposed to the only they way can go there vote. we can persuade them because mm -hmm. they're going there to vote mm -hmm. you know i i see the value of both that's uh, and it is tough to get people out to vote too i mean yeah. when we've done australian ballot yeah. our numbers are fairly low they have been in the past in rochester um so yeah that's one thing to consider um people are busy Mm -hmm. Right. So even getting out to the polls to mm -hmm. to vote along, mm -hmm. it's tough. But you know, right by capturing them in the, the the only way this is going to be moved anywhere is if you attend the meeting to mm -hmm. to vote at the meeting. I, you know that there's your voice. Mm -hmm. If it's important, it's make, important. if it's important, make the time. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Thanks. 
the the one air the one big piece that concerns me in general about folks not i think education funding in this state is unbelievably complex and having had the privilege over the last 24 hours to be able to get in front of our voters to talk about the CLA, especially in another merged district where one town CLA dropped significantly and another didn't. And it resulted in one town having a tax decrease and another one going up eight cents. I think the ability for us to be able to explain that, answer questions about that, prior to folks voting, I do think made a significant impact for that district in regards to folks being able to support the budget fully informed, where before, I think a lot of our voters still do not understand how the tax rate ends up the way it is um, and all the different factors that play into that. And I, and I just feel like last night, um, the district that I was in front of, we had well over 100 people in attendance. And I think that they felt much more informed about how the tax rate ended up being the way it was just based on the questions and some of the comments we were able to address during the meeting. Um, and so I just offer that to say, you know, it's really fresh on my mind because I just was doing it last night at this time. Um, I do feel like it really helped folks, especially in a unified district that's fairly new, understand how can one town have a different tax rate from another. Mm -hmm. Right, rather than just flipping to that tax page mm -hmm. and going, oh, well, I'm not going to vote for that, and then walk away and then go and do your Australian ballot. Um, it forces forces people to get informed who want to make to vote. So I guess I guess I would I would say we should um, do in person as as our charter states. Can we do a um, information meeting prior to that? So. It that could be so you're not voting but maybe we're having an evening where it could be hybrid and people can attend virtually just to get some information out there before the meeting just kind of like a pre-meeting meeting yeah no you know what i mean though yeah. like that might that might get people that wouldn't potentially go to the in-person on virtually and then might draw them to actually go to the meeting. That's an interesting idea. Um, because, right, like you it get some of them talking about it. Yeah, to, to, yeah. Oh, I just, I went to the pre meeting yeah. and this was happening in there. Hey, we, you should make sure you go to the. Like a volley, you know? I think you could make sure you go. Yes, could you turn on the lights, please? <laughs> <laughs> the town did that. Um, they did a, a Zoom, a hybrid meeting um, the Monday before town meeting. For Rochester, um, just an informational thing. I don't know how well attended it was. I didn't go. Was it? <laughs> so I was planning on going to the. Was it Zoom only, or was it? Um, it was both. It was. It was so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's something we could well, talk yeah, about some regular meeting is the Monday before the vote on Tuesday. So we oh. just make that. Our regular board, our, our You're what, right, right, because the vote yeah, will yeah. be May second, and that's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But. May 1st falls on a Monday. The day before. Mm -hmm. Is that too soon? It's almost like it should be. Well, the, the other thing to factor in is the week before families have vacation. Right. So that's for our, our son. I can't speak about two yeah, 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 students. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is not something but, we have to decide yeah, on right now. But just, it is unless it factors into your decision as to whether to do um, Australian ballot or to do a um, floor vote. Um, Robert, uh, do you have any comments on? I think that um, we have an opportunity for a captive audience and we shouldn't, shouldn't waste it. That we should go ahead and, and have a, 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 a floor vote. But I definitely believe we in the value of having a pre-town meeting in addition. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, maybe one could be in Stockbridge, and right? Could be in Rochester, mm -hmm. right? We could do the virtual. It could be a hybrid in in Stockbridge, and yeah. then we can have the, the the actual school meeting and vote here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see that Stockbridge people might be more apt to get information. 
by going to that meeting in Stockbridge, then right. an informational meeting in Rochester, and then the annual right. meeting in Rochester back right. to back. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or we all do we need to vote on on that? You would vote on it, but not set a date. Or no, is everybody in agreement to 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 go? No, I mean you vote on it when we bring you your warning. We just at least need a consensus to draft your warning. Okay. 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 So we're talking a pre-informational meeting, maybe a week before, and then the annual meeting with a vote in person. Yep. Okay. Which. The annual meeting is is in your it'll be that that's the first Tuesday in May. So it'll be that May 2nd. Oh, okay. In Rochester. Okay. <laughs> okay, is there other um preparations we need for the warning or stop counting? We're moving on. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think so, right? We get everything else that we need. Yeah, really the next thing would be just, and we can talk about that the next meeting is traditionally you all have done your mailer and I've just provided uh, the budgetary documents that go into it. If that's still your plan or how you want to handle the mailer this year. Well, Lindy and Kate did it last year, Tara. I don't think the board did do it last year. Oh, right, Lindy, not. correct me. Yeah. Right, Eric. Or okay. Um, what are your feelings uh, this year? Is that something you want to take on again, yeah. or something you'd like um, more help from us or from the SU on? I guess it, happy to do it again. I would tap into Erica because this is definitely I was explaining to Jamie she, prior that she was copy editor for a newspaper. Okay. She definitely knows her stuff way better than I do. Okay. Um, I I definitely want to make sure that we um, right Aren't some of the that fuzzy what? she can do. But um, so yeah, I mean we can. Are we? My question: If we're doing it again, are we using Tira's template or are we using that template? Meaning, there's a lot more, right, Tara, right. And Jamie, that we send out than the template provided um, from what we use. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should take a look at this. Um, okay. And maybe you see see if there's something we can pare down. There is a lot of really good information in it, though, and um, yeah, I would. I, we 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 really kept the same template, you know, and it's a couple of years. It's a couple of years, and it it gives. It seems to go over well, I think, with um, our communities, and so. Okay. And Bill, I have heard your request for pictures in titles. Yeah, if there's, uh, yeah, there was some concern about it, it's just going to be too big. So yeah. um, it's not a high priority, but I just, it helps to put names with pictures. Um, and right. so I'll leave that up to the, the, the document uh, editors. Um, well, I definitely, you know, I, it's about the Thank kids, you. so that's what I really yeah. want, you know. I agree. Want to see. Robert? Uh, I just want to uh, remind those who have, who have to get, get besides a consent form, you need to have a certain number of, you have to petition um, with, and get a certain number of signatures. Um, in my case, in, in Rochester's, it's about 50 signatures a little less than 50 signatures. I don't know what it'd be in Stockbridge. A little less. Okay. Thank okay. you. We can get started on that then. Okay. Okay. Uh, the uh, 8.4 sale of the Rochester High School building update from I'm not, Superintendent Canardi. Yeah, and Robert, feel free to jump in too. Um, if you'd like, I know that, that you are still um, in touch with um, the Rochester High School Repurposing Committee. I've been meeting with them regularly. Um, and so one of the things that the, as requested by the board, the adjustment um, to the high school um, lot boundary line has been completed. Um, 
wastewater permitting is being is taking place. Um, in addition to that, right now our attorney is finishing up some details um, that was requested by the committee um, to complete the Brella application that we talked about last month. All those things are moving ahead. Uh, there was discussion um, at the prior meeting about the concern um, around the where the auditorium sits in the floodplain in addition to the floodway. There was a tour that happened. Robert, were you going to make that walkthrough or no? Yes, I did. I uh, did make that. That's what I thought. Uh, so the good news is, is that that group was provided with some possible remedies to address um, the issue with the, the floodplain that at least through my meeting with Vic um, and Catherine, they felt like there could be some real viable options there to be able to address it. Um, Robert, what else do you want to add in addition to that? Um, I, I don't wouldn't, wouldn't have anything uh, in addition. The pers person we met with is basically in charge of implementing the, the floodplain um, uh, regulations. So he was very positive. Uh, and I think there's ma uh, three major routes that can be addressed. Uh, I didn't see them as, as, you know, some are more expensive in, than the others, but I don't see that they're that they're uh, uh, project killers. Uh, no, I, I've got another meeting coming up with them soon um, with Vic and Catherine. Like I said, I'm staying in regular contact with them. I do know that the high school repurposing committee is warning their meetings publicly as, as a committee. Um, and so I just wanted to let all folks know that they're welcome to join those meetings. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I continue to get regular um, communication from that group who, like I said, is moving on finishing up the Brella application, um, which we had talked about needed to happen. Um, and so I have the end of Friday to get their information to them is what I've been told that we'll be able to turn that around after their latest request. Um, and so I feel like that application should be ready to go in here within the next week, hopefully. Um, I would ask, uh, I think Pat attended that uh, meeting as well. Do you, did you have any observations, Pat? About the same as what you had. Some of the options were, were, uh, a, a little expensive, might be hard to find funding for, some maybe not so much. Um, the Brella application has been signed by the select board and has been handed back to Catherine and Fix. So um, I think because it was originally done in last November, um, they're just plugging in some updates and it will be ready to upload uh, probably this week. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Does anybody have any uh, questions or comments? I also thought the committee did a nice job of providing an update in the Herald last week. Um, I don't know if board members were able to see that, but there was um, a, a nice update done there. And I did see that um, our, their update prior to the town books being completed was included in both Stockbridge and Rochester as well. Great. That's that's wonderful. There was one thing that was a misprint in that letter that was in um, in our books. Um, it related to, I believe it was on page two, halfway down. It talked about the uh, tax increase, and um, erroneous. It, it was saying sixteen dollars was the increase for every thousand dollars worth of value to your property. And it wasn't $16, it's $160 per thousand dollars worth of value to your house. So if you had a $200,000 house, it'd be $320. Um, that, that should always be noted that there is one misprint in that letter. And, you, and you're talking about if the town acquired it. 
yes, I yes, I believe. Right, that had to do with Rochester's tax rates. That had nothing to do with our suds. Right, but it is embedded in that in that notice that's in both books. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'm just saying, in case people are listening, I wanted to clarify <laughs> to folks that we are not talking about the high school having that type of impact on tax rates. I just want, that's why I wanted to emphasize, Pat, that's right. on if Rochester. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Excellent. Uh, any further questions, comments? Move on to Stockbridge Town Plan Education Chapter. And Parker, I did forward this document to you, so hopefully you have it. It was in the packet. Yeah, we have it in the packet. Yeah, we have it in the packet. There, yeah. there he goes. Great. Okay. Yeah. I think I'll kick it off and then Justine can help. Um, this is all about the, the, the town of Stockbridge uh, under state law needs to a look at their town plan um, every eight years, if not um, more frequently. And the Stockbridge Planning Commission has an effort underway to to revise and update and expand upon the town plan that was voted by the select board in 2015. One of the chapters is uh, the town's education plan. And so that's about a 13, 15 page thing that's within this document. And I'm still in the process of kind of editing it and checking numbers and that sort of thing. But the end of the education chapter um, is um, goals, policies, and recommendations. And you should have that. I have it. You have, have it? at home, yeah. OK, because uh, I've got extra copy if you want to, to look at this right here. I've got it. Okay. And um, at the last meeting, the board uh, appointed Justine and I to take a look at this and report back to you on our recommendations. And so we're really focusing under goals, policies, and recommendations. and um the language or the wording that is not underlined is current and as far as i haven't heard any feedback that um the planning commission is planning to change it though they haven't had really a public hearing process so we don't know um justine and i felt that it needed to be strengthened and so we've added a number two under a goal and number three under the goal um and uh because goals, you know, what are we all about? So uh, number two, just just say, and this is our wording and it can be changed. Um, and I don't think we have absolutely have to decide tonight, but I think it'd be nice because I think the Planning Commission wants to have a some sort of public review process in April. But under number two, we say it's the goal of the town to strengthen our students' educational achievement and social and emotional wellness, foster, Stockbridge's sense of community, attract young families and maintain homeowners' property values. And what we think is important is public education does all these things. Um, first and foremost, we have to educate our kids, make sure that they're well. Um, but it also uh, uh, to have a, a, a viable, outstanding public education opportunity attracts young families and we need young families of our communities are going to continue to grow and to prosper. Um, they uh, um, maintain homeowners' property values. Now, right now, we've got the COVID kickback and, and all of a sudden, I don't know, people start thinking Stockbridge's homes are uh, whatever, but um, our CLA it just is doing a job on us. but. People should be aware, especially people my age, that having a viable school not only protects, but it enhances one's property value. So if you're at my age and say, oh, I'm gonna go south uh, to Florida or something like that, I'm worried about selling my home, having a viable school enhances the value of your property. So we all have a stake in this, not only in just the, the future of our kids and our country and our community, but financially for. So that's number two. And and Justin, do you want to speak to number three? Because I think that's so important. Um, I think that um, in 
being able to respond to the question posed to us by the town, I was thinking originally toward some of the conversations we had at our retreat and some of the ways that um, the goals committee has worked. I'm on the goals committee as well to to create a vision for the school based on our uniqueness and um, and then thinking about a vision for a town. I, I I just began thinking about the strengths that our school has and, and some of the things that our school doesn't have. Um, and, and seeing if we can um, add some language into this town vision that connects with some of the goals we were looking into, like integrating the arts into, into the curriculum more, outdoor education, utilizing different resources um, in the community and other community members that could be um, resources that we could tap into educationally and creatively um, and thinking about why how we could compete with these other schools that that people might move to other towns to go to certainly they they may move to Woodstock because they want their kids to go to be able to play football someday why would they want to move to Stockbridge or, you know, obviously Stockbridge, but Stockbridge and Rochester. What are the things in this community that that could be part of the school make the area a special place to bring kids, to raise kids in? So um, I guess that, you know, it's not as flushed out as the, I think Bill shared the blurb that I wrote, um, the memorandum, he calls it. Um, this is kind of boiled down into a very small sentence about how to how to integrate our unique our uniqueness into the school vision. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through here, and then you can pick it apart, whatever. Under the the second section, which is town policy, the first one was goals. Town policy. I want to point out number, and, and there's no changes. This is the current policy that was adopted by the town in 2015. No changes here, but I wanted to point out number two and number three. Um, we thought it was important then. We certainly think it continues to be important. Number two, that the town supports the continuance of Stockbridge Central School, um, and that just makes sense from all the goals above. Um, and we think that um, as chair of the planning commission back in 2015, I felt was important as a member of the RSED board. I, I totally agree, but I just wanted to point that out. And when we did our survey, almost 70% uh, of those surveyed and there we had a, a great turnout. So the, the validity of the survey results are very, very valid. Um, we had a 41% uh, or 40% felt strongly about having a local school strengthens the community strongly and supporting that were 69%. So we've got support and um, we want to continue to build on that. Number three, Tom supports a policy allowing parents to choose where to send their children to middle and high school. And that's directly to, goes from a survey that we took in the same survey in 2015 where um, you combine the strongly support the statement and support the statement 75 percent of those respondents it's just huge and the reason i wanted to bring that up is because uh these uh, proposed legislation at at the state house uh act um, or h 258 on the house side and and s66 and we've been monitoring that thanks to Jamie's um, um, uh, being all over those issues. And that kind of, uh, if those were passed, that really um, would do a job on school choice. And um, most recently, the Planning Commission did another survey, 2022, and that second statement about school choice is, I haven't seen the exact numbers, but it, they're pretty much the same. So overwhelmingly, even um, uh, people that didn't have a direct connection with the schools, their kids didn't go there, they didn't go there, um, a strong uh, majority supported the school choice thing. So um, I wanted to bring to our attention because it's 
Uh, I think it's important from Stockbridge that we continue to have that support, um, but it had implications with S66 and that sort of thing in it. And, and I don't know uh, whether there's a downside of that as far as Rochester's point of view. So, um, but I wanted, uh, Justin and I wanted to make sure that you were aware of what we were, we were thinking of doing there. Um, and then there's one small edit on number four about childcare facilities. Um, so, and number recommendation, um, we really push capital planning and we want the town to continue to push capital planning. That's, um, we've got to have safe, sound, secure buildings. So, so the underlined in the school board should continue is yeah. that stuff you've added. Active, and then, yeah. And then what is in the brackets? Well, I've taken that out. You're taking that out. Yeah. Okay. It just says basically continue to make capital planning, maintenance, and funding a priority. Okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. And that's going to be important when we, at some time, we're going to have a, a bond issue. Yeah. Well, this puts, if, if the town goes along with this, uh, then we basically say, we think this is, this is an important thing to do. They don't necessarily have to agree with the size of the bond issue. Uh, this can have uh, an influence on public policy. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, Justin, do you have anything else you wanted to, to add on this? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I feel like I, I worked uh, enough to edit the things that I was interested in and I just wanted to make sure to bring it to the, to the school board to see if anybody had anything else to say. Yep. It felt like we were just kind of doing it on our own, which we were, but <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. We're on a board, so. Any uh, comments? Uh... I, my only comment, I guess, would just be as far as the layout on here, number two and number three, where you made the changes in under goals. Three, it's different than number two, but it seems repetitive. So I, like almost like it should be a sub bullet under number two, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. The Stockbridge sense of community, attract young families. You say, sort of you say it in number two, yeah. but the only difference between the two are that you're, you're integrating our area's unique educational resources into our school system. Right. I do like that part of the phrase. I do yeah. too. So it's almost like that should just be a sub bullet. Enhancing the points. It should be a continuation by, of number two. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I agree. I well, think two is kind of like what? what why? And answering the question why. Right. Yeah. Right. And three yeah. is giving you, that, giving you an example of how. Yeah. Right. So they could almost be combined in, into one of this is uh -huh. what and, and, and continuing on how. Let me see if we can do you know what, stab at that. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. yeah. I'd love to get a consensus to be able to just to, to keep this moving, and I'll um, mm -hmm. and then Justin and I can work on on that mm -hmm. on that suggestion. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's great though. Um, I have a yeah quick question. Do you, does it need to mention at all um, about um, combining with other districts to to keep these goals? Um, I mean, there's no mention of. You know, Stockbridge is is you know a shared school board and district with Rochester. Um, you know, does that need to be said, or is that pretty much well known throughout Stockbridge? It, and I think it's in the section before, isn't it, Bill? It talks it about okay. our educational makeup. I see, and that goes right. So this corner, be, this this that leads into right, this chapter. Like when okay. You need it. Cool. I like I like this stuff on here. I mean, this is it, it definitely echoes, you know, how I believe we feel in Rochester, you know, okay. um, maintaining our small school, a community, taking advantage of our resources, um, mm -hmm. you know, allowing people to have choice and putting money into the building. And, you know, these are all things I think that as a small town, we want to hold on to and support. Thank you. I agree. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good work, guys. All right. Um, solar project for Stockbridge Central School. Patrick, did you have any updates on what you? I I don't have to know. Matt Matt didn't didn't do anything yet. He's been super busy. Um. So I think he was going to look into the existing system for us. Um. I think one of the questions was whether the roof was capable of holding the panels, which I'm pretty sure it is. I also had spoke with Cricket. Yeah. 
Um, she, I think she had already done that legwork for something else. And mm -hmm. So there aren't any issues as far as putting it on the roof. Um, so really it's just a matter of whether we, we want to move in the, that direction or not spend the money. So. I, I think last month he was going to work on some more of the details around the financial aspects of it. Okay. I, I, well, I could be wrong. I, I felt like he was going to have a more formal proposal around how it was going to, like, the credits were going to offset. We a, hmm. Yeah, I think we needed an electrician cost on the installation, didn't we? Right? No, uh, there was something I'm with Jamie. There was something that we needed. It wasn't there a, 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 a nearby system that we were looking into. <laughs> we weren't sure who was using it. Well, we have we have the system. So the oh, the random the random only extra costs yeah. are the setup from GMP. Right. Which, okay. Between two hundred fifty and four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, the um, master electrician, I think, and the permitting was the two. So questions. master electrician, all he's going to do is just, he's just going to come in and, and approve Matt's work. Okay. So it's not like he's coming and doing a bunch of work. It's not, okay. you, you, in my opinion, he's going to come in and spend a couple hours, um, if that. Okay. So he's not the one that like does part of that. No, no, Matt, would, Matt would handle the whole installation. And basically, it's just having a master electrician look at it, approve it, and say it's okay. Um, which I may even be able to provide that as well. Okay. So, um, and then the per permitting is pretty easy to tell. Permitting is just uh, applying yes. to, for a permit to put it on the road. Yeah, and I don't even, I don't know if that even and that's the weird. state. Um, state. Oh yeah, so state permit. Yeah, which is like 150 bucks normally. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't think there's a town. No, it's for the okay. state. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and what what's the time frame of, of this project? I, think. I can talk talk with Matt about it, but um I think it could I mean obviously I'd wait till the spring at this point. So I would say it could be done. Um I'll talk with him either April break or it could be done after school is out. Right, during the summer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and the, um, uh, so the associated costs, you're saying the engineer fees for weight distribution on the roof, that has already been done by Cricket? And so yeah, and, and I did speak with her, and even if she needed to, to help us out with that or whatever, I don't think she, she's not going to charge for it, I don't think. I, I, nothing really has happened. She, she's more than willing to tell us that it's fine. So, okay. Um, yeah, so there really isn't any, it, it, nothing, as far as added costs, it's nothing. Right. Okay. It's, just, it's about $6,000 mm -hmm. for this the, for this to get done. Um, the one question I had before was about the inverter, how it says there's four years of life expectancy left. How much are the inverters if we would need to replace them? Uh, they can range, but I would say on average, a cup, like two, between two and three thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. And not to say it won't last longer. Okay. Is, and it was, I was kind of confused if this was just the warranty, like, like these are just the warranties are up in 15 years or in four mm -hmm. years, or if it was really the life expectancy. Life expectancy. Uh -huh. Yeah. So based off of, you know, manufacturers specifications. Um, okay. But, yep. Okay. Does anybody have any further questions or? And the 15 years is really, I mean, they're only, I think when we pulled them off, they were four years old. Okay. They weren't. They're, it's they're, they're fairly new. Right. Comes with the transferable warranty. Mm -hmm. Right. So the invert. So right. This is where I was confused. Because mm -hmm. the inverters warranty till twenty twenty seven, and the optimizers are warranted till. So let me check for that. Then maybe he was referring to a warranty, but it's rather than a life expectancy. Yeah, that's. I'll check with that because I, I can't imagine. 
that that inverter is only going to last another four years. I mean, I live off grid, so I know okay. I know enough about it that that doesn't seem right to me. Okay. Yep. Um, and if that's what, if we want to wait for that information to go, to go that's fine. You know. What do you guys uh, think okay. about this project? I like it. My gosh. Thank you for everything you're doing to make this thing happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Deborah will be ecstatic mm -hmm. if we before we just... She's not Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a nice thing because she's the leader of the Stockbridge Community Meals mm -hmm. and the school. And, and Lindy, so much thank you for allowing to use that little uh, uh, concession stand for uh, the freezers for. And, and here she's contributing. And that was kind of say part of it. Deborah's thought was that, you know, her hopes are that that would help offset the cost of the freezers, mm -hmm. and, you know, by, by I'm providing guessing. this. I think so. Okay, so um, at this point, are we ready to take action on this or we're we looking for a little bit more information? I'm comfortable with it, but. <laughs> I think my only request would be that maybe we connect with EEI because they're going to put that vent up on the roof and does that change any of this? Um, there's some there's something happening on the roof. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, with the EEI um, work just before we put all the things on the roof. <laughs> Matt had sent me a, uh, a uh, Google Earth photo of, where, yeah. of the roof and where he proposed. So if I pull that up, you could tell me. Do you know where the, you don't know where the that's I can send it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can send it and ask. Well, I think we're excited about the project. Do we want to just get a little more, some of these um, question, unanswered questions uh, for next month yeah. maybe and, and take action then? Does that okay. seem reasonable or, I mean, whatever everybody's comfortable with. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. let's let's, let's just finalize a couple yeah. of these little no, details. I think it is something that we are all yeah, we're quite not excited about. Yeah, we to go up next month. So. Right, and I, yeah. you know, I think probably in the summer would, you know, make be, the most sense. sense. And there's not like this. Oh, we've got to rush because the kids are getting coming back no, into the it. building and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, great. Well, then we'll move on to the um, study, our uh, book club book. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I, uh, you know, I thought it was great that, um, you know, this chapter, you know, is about new members coming on, which, um, you know, it, we're, we're getting, we'll be having a vote um, and we'll see what the makeup of the board is after our vote. Um, also, that we are doing a, um, uh, uh, I don't know, like a, a manual like a, uh, uh, for new board members, um, and I thought that was great. Uh, the policy that we were just talking about, about civility, um, I underlined something in this book that said, um, you, uh, trustee is realizing that you can never take off your board hat as long as you're on the board. Mm -hmm. You you were always part of this board. I mean, um, we think of the policy we were just talking about earlier. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we just read about <laughs> yeah. that. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, no, I thought it was a good chapter. Uh, I have to, you know, sort of commend um, the way our uh, district and SU is, is, is handling new board members because when I first came on to a board, um, years ago, I I did not get a, a nice personal greeting and meeting with the superintendent, yeah. with the chair of the board. I was not given um, a bunch of documents and handbooks to look over. Um, it was literally just kind of sitting there like a deer with the headlights and the eyes at each meeting. Just it took a long time yeah. to get Can up to survive? speed. It yeah. took a long time, yeah. and so I, I really commend on on the process here, even though I've. Had a little bit of board experience i was still treated as you know as a new board member because everything is is new when you come upon any group that's already involved and immersed in, in work and um you know I, I i got to do some meetings i i, I got 
lost sorts of materials to look over and, and I felt like it was um, handled really well. Nice. That's great feedback. Hmm. Excellent. It was a short chapter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, our, our um, uh, next chapter is we're chapter five. So we are off by one, one month, but um, because that kind of confused me at first. I was like, oh no, which one am I supposed to be reading? <laughs> uh, so we'll read chapter five for our April meeting. Great. Yeah, I, a couple of things. I love this chapter. They start off by saying it's not possible to overemphasize the importance of welcoming and onboarding a new team member to the governance team. And I just think, I think we represent this. I think we something we can continually have to, to work on to strengthen and not take anything for granted. And uh, the second one was every time a new trustee joins the board, it's a new board. Yeah. So it isn't like, oh, you're joining, you're, you're going to do exactly what we're doing. We're just going to show you the rules world. No, uh, there's an expectation that every new member brings something to the board. And this, uh, if we do it right, uh, their propensity to speak up and to get engaged. And as, as uh, one of the top tip, tips was, be a leader on your board. Well, you don't have to take the U.S. Senate. You had to wait a year before you could give a speech. Well, not in this. So you can be a leader um, from almost the get-go based on your skill set, interest, um, passion. And um, so I think we've got a lot going. And I, I, But every time I read this book, it's just something that we just have to keep reminding ourselves. Excellent. Thank you. All right, is there any further comments or questions on that? Okay, um, we have any new hires or resignations? No, nope, just at this point, we're posting for positions that hadn't been filled okay. and looking for those for next year already. Okay, so. great. Um, is there any public comment? I don't see any public. <laughs> I was looking for Patty. I don't see her there. Okay. Um, she came for the high school. That was perfect. <laughs> yes, whatever. That's uh, Jamie. Just, I, I think you're getting ready to go up to next meeting dates. And sure. I was hoping that we could secure that special meeting to approve the warning. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I, was, how long? I was going to suggest. Um, Mondays, I think, typically are good for this board, if I rem remember right. Yep. Christine saying yes. So I was going to suggest, and I get it, this could be a very quick meeting, um, Monday the 20th. Does, um, does it need to be, can people join virtually? As they can, yeah. That will give us enough time to get signatures. Um, but we'll want to get those wrapped up within a few days. But yes, we could definitely have people join virtually then, take action and start having people sign. And then what I think we've done in the past where your warning has had it at the school and then Lindy will finish getting signatures and then we'll get it off and get it posted. Okay, great. Um, Monday the 20th uh, works for me. Mm -hmm. It looks like, yeah, I was... 5.30, does 5.30 work? Yeah. And it would just be that, like I said, it, it it should not take long. All right, at 5.30. Okay, so we'll have a special meeting uh, Monday, March 20th at 5.30, and our next um, regular scheduled meeting will be Monday, April 3rd at 5.30 in Stockbridge and via Google Meets. Um, uh, future agenda items, I have um, use of our Facebook page uh, as, as a topic for a future meeting and um, of the solar project. Yeah, I think it's got to be a uh, town meeting prep for school meeting prep. And school meeting prep, yeah. Yes, and, and discussion on uh, pre, mm -hmm. or, or having a pre meeting and meeting, school meeting prep. I think you have a social, I, I, I'd have to look. I feel like there's one of our data reports are due, but I could be wrong. If it is, we'll certainly capture that. I got to look at the calendar. 
Of course. Okay. And our community meeting tomorrow night is when? 5.30 to 7. 5.30 to 7. And the food's great. All right. <laughs> Come through the food. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, if there's uh, no further business, we will uh, take a motion to adjourn. So move. All right. Second. Second. Excellent.